Oh, stewardess, I speak jive. Oh, good. Back before the war broke out, I was a saucier in San Antonio. I bet I could call up some of them greens. Yeah. Just hang loose blood. She's gonna catch up on the rebound on the med side. What it is, big mama? My mama didn't raise no dummies. I duck a rap. Cut me some slack, Jack. Yeah. Noodle some crawfish out the patty, yo. Ha. I made her some crab apples for dessert now, yeah? Hey, yeah. Ha. Chomp don't want to help, Chomp don't get the care. Jive ass dude don't got no brains in here. Guys, this is just ridiculous, man. Kamala Harris. This lady is so fraudulent. She's so bad. I can't take it. This is going to be another fun one, okay? So Kamala Harris was out here faking another accent she's doing what many would call code switching. I don't really agree with even giving this a term because they're trying to like give legitimacy to the fact that Kamala Harris changes how she talks based off of the audience. We're not talking about being at home with friends versus being at work. Kamala Harris done changed about four or five times now. It's just ridiculous. Take a look. You better thank a union member for sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. You better thank a union member for vacation time. Because what we know, let's just get through the next 64 days. How about that? <laughs> and you all helped us win in 2020, and we're going to do it again in 2024. Well, I see people testifying. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Thank a union member for sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. You better thank a union member for vacation time. Thank unions for sick leave. Thank unions for paid family leave. Thank unions for your vacation time. Now, before we continue, y'all let me know in the comments how many times have you seen Donald Trump code switch, okay? You might could say like one or two when he's with his homeboys versus when he talks to the American people, you know, like shout out to the locker room talk type stuff. But at the end of the day, it's still very similar to how he is. It's certainly not a different accent. It's more so in regard to vulgarity level, I suppose, not really like an accent necessarily. So Corinne Jean-Pierre was asked about this and she's throwing a little hissy fit, okay? She got triggered by Peter Ducey, okay? Peter Ducey's one of the greatest reporters ever. He always asks the questions that we always want the answers to. I really appreciate him. I'm gonna go ahead and react to what he asked Kareen about so I can see their interaction today. I have not seen this yet myself, but from my understanding, it was pretty explosive. Let's get into it. Clear about that, and we'll continue to be so. A different topic. Since when does the vice president have what sounds like a southern accent? I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, I, I mean, this is. <laughs> she was talking about unions in Detroit using uh, one tone of voice. Is this something that same you think? Same line. Okay, Peter. That this... she uh, she used the same line in Pittsburgh, and it sounded like she at least had some kind of a southern I think, drawl. I mean, what? do you hear the question that you're? I mean, do you think Americans seriously think that this is an important question? They care. You know what they care about? They care about the economy. They care about lowering costs. They care about health care. That's what Americans care about. So that's what they okay, want to well, hear. This is something... They care about your colleague just asked me about democracy. What basically we talked about went back and forth about democracy and freedom. That's right. what they care about. I'm not even going to entertain some question about the press. It's just it, it's just hearing it sounds so ridiculous. Well, but hearing it is the question. I'm talking about the questions is is just insane. Is that how she talks? In meetings here? I, I'm just, come on, Peter, we're, we're moving on. We're still moving around. Go ahead, Anita. <laughs> Kareem over here, triggered. But it's like, what do you mean it's about policy? She don't have no policies on the website. What are you talking about? There's nothing to read up on. She has no consistency. This was a whole strategy from the beginning is because 
these folks did the analysis. Okay, the Democrats was in the back room somewhere. Like, how do we beat Trump? Like, hey, we can't let him win. Hey. Right, they were going crazy because they, they already staged the coup against Joe Biden. They're like, how do we find a way to get this unwinnable candidate to somehow win? Okay, they're like, well, uh, they're like, I don't know. She got her ass kicked in the primaries back in 2019, rolling over into 2020. So I guess we can't go off of her policies because clearly that didn't work. So they're like, well, we, why don't we just move her to the middle? Like, well, if we move her straight to the middle, it's going to look like she's a flip-flop polywop. So I get it. I got it. Why don't we just not talk about policy at all? Instead, we just say orange man bad project 2025 dictator on day one j6 and it will win the election in a landslide and oh don't forget to do the pandering and talk like you a southern black person even though you were raised in canada guys everybody knows this lady's fake like i'm gonna let jd vance go off on her so you guys want to hear that truth about kamala harris <laughs> kamala harris is a phony who caters to whatever audience is in front of her. I don't know if you saw this, but earlier this week, look up the clip. She went down to Georgia, Georgia and started talking with a fake Southern accent. I'm serious. Now, what the hell was that all about? Kamala Harris grew up in Canada. They don't talk like that in Vancouver or Quebec or wherever she came from. Doesn't matter. It's the same new liberal policies, but a different accent, whoever she's talking to. Now on November 5th, now on November 5th, she can go back to using her San Francisco accent because we are going to send her pack in and we're going to elect Donald Trump president of the United States. And for those who are making these ridiculous arguments about code switching, I'm going to let you hear what Candace Owens has to say because she perfectly articulates why this is so freaking ridiculous and completely unacceptable. This lady's playing it in everybody's face. Owens, yo, 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 what is this? Okay, you know what? I see this, this is how it feels to me. So it, imagine if I decided to run, I don't know, in India, and I just decided to be like, hello, Thank you very much for, for helping to watch the Candace show. I'm coming to you live from the Candace podcast. What do you guys think? Do you think the Indian people would be offended by that? Because that's, that's literally me watching her try to code switch and put on a black scent, right? Becoming a, I guess, a cartoon stereotype of what she believes every black person sounds like and can relate to. That's what it's like for me as I watch that. And if I ever see Kamala Harris, that's exactly how I'm going to talk. That's exactly how I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk like a Simpsons character. And, and then we're just going to see what happens as she starts pretending to be black. And then I'm just going to throw back to her pretending to be Indian because that is the culture that she actually identifies with. And we're just going to see where we get. And the answer is going to be nowhere. But here's my, here's my thing. OK, if black people vote for her on the basis of that, OK, while Candace is not black, if people, black people vote for her on the basis of her pretending that she listens to Megan the Stallion and Quavo, she has not. Have you seen her husband? Nope. Doesn't bring him around nowhere. Nope. She does not. Uh, have you seen her entire family? There is no one in that household that is listening to Megan the Stallion. Not a single person that's listening to Megan the Stallion, least of all her. OK, but if you're going to vote for her according to that. You deserve what you get. I don't care. Call me any. I don't care. I, I respect it. If you keep buying the salt and you're a slug, then I got to just respect the game. I'm done telling you guys. I'm done trying to tell you guys what happens every four years. You, you keep maiming and caricaturing me and being convinced that that woman has your best interest. You get what you get. In fact, Quavo, honestly, if she was still district attorney, she'd probably arrest his ass. Pardon my language. Pardon my language. I think she'd send him to prison. Candace is exactly right here, guys. Ain't no code switching that you could say you got all these different freaking accents. It doesn't make sense unless you could just say, oh, I was just having fun. I was just joking around. But no, guys, this is a serious thing. We're talking about a campaign. Every time you happen to go someplace, all of a sudden you develop some crazy, ridiculous accent that sounds extremely patronizing, extremely pandering. It makes absolutely no sense. I can't just be every time I walk into 
uh, a gas station. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. That's extremely disrespectful. It's fun to joke about, admittedly, because this has honestly been kind of somewhat of a fun video. However, this is extremely dumb and just totally inappropriate. And I feel like the Harris campaign must really think a lot of people are just straight up retards. <laughs> and unfortunately, it seems as though the Harris campaign is right for the most part because a lot of people that are blindly standing behind her are either one Trump deranged or two stupid. Like they're not voting for Harris. They're voting against Trump. Or if they are voting for Harris, it's because of her gender and her race that she made up, not even her actual real race. She's trying to pretend like she's black and she's basically just for the most part, an Indian woman doesn't even have any African in her. So this lady is completely fraudulent. She got fake policies, stealing Trump policies, no policies on her website, fake accent, that didn't even earn the position, like didn't manage to win the primary and get in this position. Straight up DEI hire. Joe Biden said he was going to pick a woman at his, as his VP. He happened to pick Kamala Harris because she happened to be the closest thing that there was to a black woman that was available. And now all of a sudden she managed to shoehorn her way into becoming a presidential nominee and is out here pandering her ass off. The reason why this is so terrible is because she doesn't have any real skill. That's the reason why this campaign is so bad. There's no skill behind her. So what they're doing is they're not relying on Kamala herself to really be the campaign. They're relying on the campaign to win. Like, look, we're just going to put her in the background somewhere. We're just going to hide her under the bed, hide her in the closet somewhere, and we're going to win the campaign off of other BS cowardly strategies alone, not to mention all the ridiculous pandering. I don't think that this is going to work. As a matter of fact, it's pissing a lot of people off. We ain't boo-boo the foo-foo. Don't know Indian woman talk like that. I don't know one Indian woman who talk, who say stuff like, oh, we got six, four days, y'all, and we be uh, washing collard greens in our bathtub. You are an Indian woman from California. And you over here sound, trying, to, trying to sound like you was raised in, in, in somewhere in the dirty south. See the fakery. She was in Georgia a week ago, and suddenly she had a Georgia accent. She goes from one to the other. You know, I, I flew yesterday, Carly. As I crossed each state, heading from New York back to Florida, my accent changed. I'm telling you, I had the Carolina accent. <laughs> Minutes later, South Carolina. Then I was over Georgia. I mean, come on. I, I, I was going all over the place. I turned redneck at one point. I think I got that <laughs> one in there, too. But, but, look, this points to the fakery and how dumb... Kamala Harris and the Democrats hope that the American people are. It's an insult to the people of Detroit, to the people of Michigan, to the union workers. And the workers versus the leadership is a big part of this because the leadership, like Sean Fain, head of the UAW, they're fully up there, you know, shouting their pro terrorist support. They're doing it, Rashida Tlaib, with others, Ilan Omar, and others. The fact is, this is fakery. It's insulting to the American people. It's it's Hillary Clinton with hot sauce all over mm -hmm. again. I don't know. Maybe Kamala had some collard greens and. She was busy taking a phone call about her accent. I don't know. And man, I tell you, I hope she gets her ass beat at the poll. I hope this is like the greatest landslide in presidential history. Kamala Harris need to lose all 50 states at this point because of how much of a dumb, stupid idiot she is. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I appreciate you watching the Black Anomaly Rising channel. I'm out. Thank you very much for, for helping to watch the Candace show. I'm coming to you live from the Candace podcast.